and welcome back to another Jenny Kirk review and box opening video. Again, I sound like absolute rottenness because I feel that way. Still getting over viral labyrinthitis and uh, the more astute of you will have noticed that I'm even wearing exactly the same thing as the last video. <laughs> it's because we filmed several of these together. What do you think I do? Live here? Oh wait a minute, I do. Uh, anyway. On this video we're going to be uh, opening the box and reviewing another limited edition uh, special commission that um, I've got and uh, bought this actually exactly the same time and from the same place as the one that featured in the last video. Uh, and this was uh, through the Aerith, uh, or is it Aerith? It's either Aerith or Aerith. I've got a suspicion actually because I normally mispronounce things that it probably is actually Aerith instead of Aerith. But uh, there we go. But this is a place down um, it's near sort of Dartford on the uh, river uh, on the Thames estuary, and it's uh, it's a place that's I, I think it's probably seen a lot of redevelopment over the years. Certainly, being so close to London docks, it probably suffered a little bit from bombing raids in the Second World War. Um, but this particular wagon dates back again, pre Second World War. Uh, and it's um, uh, a wagon for a company called Papermakers Chemicals Limited and uh, Aerith holds uh, a special connection to my family because it's where my grandfather was from. Um, he was evacuated from there uh, during the Second World War and never really went back. Um, but uh, this has the catalogue number 37-650R again produced exclusively for Aerith or Aerith Model Railway Society, 14 ton tank wagon, and we can see it's in the usual Backman blue and red box, which have become really quite familiar of late. Um, and in my opinion, actually, a good deal more eye catching than the slightly darker and more plain blue boxes that uh, they used to come in. We'll take that out again, just like the uh, Shepherd Neem Brewer's wagon. We've got our limited edition certificate here. Uh, with the logo of the Erith Model Railway Society and this gives us a little bit more information as well on the tanker. It says the Erith Model Railway Society Paper Maker Chemicals Limited Limited Edition 14 ton tank wagon and then gives the catalogue number but it says Paper Makers Chemicals Limited had factory... Uh, ha oh. I t I whoever typed these, come on spell check! It says Paper Makers Chemicals Limited had factory at Corrie's Wharf, or had a factory, I suppose, in Erith in Kent during the 1930s. It is clearly shown on the ordnance survey maps of the area at this time. This wagon dates from 1938, when top platforms were introduced on tanks. Tanks were. <laughs> Spell check, please! Even my old 1997 copy of Microsoft Word has a spell checker that would have picked up on this. On, I, I presume it's supposed to say, on tank wagons of this type. This tank wagon was built at Hurst Nelson Company Limited, Motherwell, Scotland, and would have run over at the... Oh, let's go again. This tank wagon was built at Hurst Nelson Company Limited, Limited, Motherwell, Scotland, and would have run over the... the... short word. It would have gone so nice there. LMS Railway System to the Southern Railway, and then through to Curry's Wharf in Erith. Paper making was obviously important industry around Erith Kent, as there are several pubs named after this process in the local area. Again, it's a limited uh, run of 504 pieces, and uh, this certificate shows that this is number 169 of 504. So again, at the time of recording this video, I expect that they've probably still got quite a few of these left, so if you get in quick, you too could be the proud owner of this wagon and this grammatically mangled uh, limited edition certificate. Within the, um, the uh, box there, we've got uh, the wagon in the plastic insert, and uh, we'll just take that out. And, uh, oops, unlike the uh, Shepherd Neen Brewery wagon, Rather than having the paper tissue paper, they've gone back to that sort of polystyrene material in there. It's all there just to stop the wagon from rubbing against the plastic, which would put marks onto the paint finish. Now, it's a, a nice sort of satin black finish with the livery picked out in white. So, very eye-catching black and white. 
Now, I know it sounds stupid, but uh, it's actually a very good rendition of black. And the reason I say this is not because I'm, I'm being pedantic or weird, but it's because, um, certainly in model form, black can be quite a difficult uh, colour to get absolutely right. But they've got the right mix here. It's not completely matte and it's not completely gloss. Um, so, the wagon itself is presented pristine. Um, but would provide a very good base for weathering if you were so inclined. It's got the running number 5278 and it says on the side its uh, home location, Corrie's Wharf, Erith, Kent and that would presumably be the, the empty to instruction so once it's obviously made its delivery um, and been emptied or indeed if it's going the other way and taking raw material in it just gives an indication of uh, which way the wagon is to be routed. We've got a very crisp rendition of the Paper Makers Chemicals Limited and the PMC Roundel there. And it's got very crisp edges, the letters are very clearly defined and even though it goes across some of the riveting and the um, tank plate detail, this doesn't in any way distort it and look like it's misprinted. We've got uh, the top platforms there with a representation of the checker plate and a very, very finely detailed uh, top hatch as well actually. I'm looking at that. It's clearly a separately applied detail and it really does look something special. And on the wagon sole bars we can see we've got the maker's plates and a whole load of writing. And with my uh, rubbishy uh, oldie worldy agey uh, eyesight I can't actually read some of these plates. But I know from the quality of uh, previous Batman wagons that uh, when we put the extreme close-up lens on that, we're going to be able to actually read those. And they are very, very crisply uh, represented on there. The wheels, we've got the standard Batman turn brass wheels uh, and we've got the white tyres again, as I've explained many, many times in the past. These are really just so that in a visual inspection of the real wagons, any kind of cracks that could ultimately lead to a, a catastrophic wheel failure whilst it's running at speed and subsequent derailments and nastiness. Uh, it just makes it all easier to spot. So there we have it. The uh, second of the Irith Model Railway Society Special Commission wagons. I bought these two wagons together even though we've done them as two separate videos just for ease of putting them up here on YouTube. But don't forget to like this video and share it too and uh, look back through the uh, oh, huge lists of, you know, yada yada, you know this spiel, come on, you've been here before, if I have to tell you, you're doing something wrong, but anyway, you take very good care of yourself, and uh, it be me, Jenny Kirk, saying uh, bye for now, and hopefully after we've uh, finished doing these recordings today, um, give it a few days, and I might actually sound normal again, well, or at least as normal as I usually get to sound. <laughs> See you later.